In this video, I'm gonna show you guys how to get Travis Scott style effects for your vocals. We are going to go over Travis Scott's vocal recording chain, how he processes his lead vocals, ad-libs, and layers, and all the other special effects he uses throughout his music. So be sure to stick around till the end so you can learn how to recreate all these vocal effects for your music. So when Travis Scott records his vocals, he typically uses a Sony C800G into a 1073 followed by a TubeTech CO1B. But if you don't have access to any of this specific gear, do not worry, because we can still achieve similar results with whatever gear you may currently have. The vocal chain I used when recording these songs was a Neumann U87 into a BAE 1073 followed by a Tube Sessor. But again, you do not need this exact gear one-to-one -one because with some simple plugins and referencing, we're gonna be able to still achieve that Travis Scott vocal sound. So for this video, I prepared three songs with my friend Da Vinci and Mike Dubinsky so that way we could go over all the different styled effects that Travis Scott uses because no two songs sound the same and there's a bunch of stuff that Travis Scott does to his vocals so the first thing that I want to do is just play the first song right here just so you can hear a little bit of what we're working with. So every time I wake up, I gotta stay that cake up Going double back, I move like that, I pick my pace up Ain't no way they can take us, I run my with my face up My eyes, I can be, I'm feeling way be off my So every time I wake up The first thing I want to go over is all the processing on the lead vocals. So obviously you're going to need auto-tune for that Travis Scott vocal sound. I know Travis Scott uses auto-tune EFX, but for this example, I'm just going to be using auto-tune pro because it does basically the same thing, whether it sounds different or not, that's up for debate, debate that in the comments below, but this is what I use for these songs. So as far as the settings go, I, you could just leave it at zero. You know, Travis Scott has a very heavily tuned vocal. Just make sure you set your proper key and scale and then set the input type to whether you're low male or alto tenor. I'd like to use whichever one. So for all of Travis Scott's lead vocals, I've noticed that they're always very bright sounding. So I kind of want to go backwards as far as EQ goes and start at the end of my chain. To achieve that bright sound, what I used was this Acoustica Purple P1. It's like a pull tech emulation EQ. What I did was I boosted five and a half dBs around 12 kilohertz with a broad band to get that nice bright sound. Now, if you do not have this Acoustica Purple P1, then you could also use the Slate Digital Fresh Air or the Mag4 EQ. The Acoustica P1 and the Mag EQ are both paid plugins, but if you want the free plugin, you could use the Slate Digital Fresh Air. That one's free on Slate Digital. You just go ahead and download that one and use that one instead. The only thing that I would say about the Slate Digital plugin versus these two is the Mag EQ and the Acoustica Purple P1, you could push a little bit heavier without it sounding too jarring and bright to the ear where it's like scratchy to the ear so with the slate digital i would be careful because that one's easier to make it sound bad quick so just use it lightly it has the high band and then it also has the mid band usually i'll just boost the high sometimes i will boost the mids but i don't go overboard with it but if used carefully you can still make that one sound very nice now when i was mixing these songs i didn't start at the end of my chain so let's just start from the very beginning of my chain for all the lead vocals the first thing that i did was use this ssl eq and all i really did with this is just clean up up around 157 hertz so that's all i use this plugin for and it gives the vocals a little bit more of like an analog texture and character a little bit because it has noise but usually when i'm filtering out low end within the song i always either just go high and then back it off or i'll just back it off to where it feels nice so for this song i used 157 and then the next thing that i did was i went over to this pro q3 all i did was filter it out a little bit more i use the pro q as more of a surgical eq so with my ssl eq i do more broad strokes obviously you can go tighter on the Q and do all this other stuff too which I do play with sometimes but usually after I do my SSO EQ then I go straight into the fab filter pro Q to go very surgical and then it also has like the dynamic section so I just took off this low mid resonance right here and then another one and then filter it out just to make sure it was nice and clean a quick tip for EQing if you're ever unsure of how much you want to take out within your songs play a reference track to what you kind of want your vocals to sound like or sit like within the mix and compare the two. So if you hear a lot of compression, then you got to match the compression. Or if you hear a specific EQ curve for the vocal, then you have to match the vocal. Obviously, every song is different and just work with whatever works best for your material. But that's why referencing is very good because right here within these low mid frequencies, I always like to take out a lot of boxiness. So whenever I'm mixing, I'll listen to my reference and that's how I got the bright sound, you know? So I basically threw on the 
purple P1 or you could use again the mag or the slate digital and boost because I noticed that all of Travis Scott's songs it's very bright and in your face so that's why I showed you that first but then as far as for like the low mids and all that stuff you want to make sure that it kind of matches whatever your reference is so again Travis Scott's vocals they do not have a lot of boxiness so that's what I removed all the boxiness and then for this song I used the CLA 76 a little bit more of an open attack because this already has a super fast attack and then a slightly faster release and let's see how much game reduction I'm getting on this so it's hitting around negative three to negative five which was good and then I evened it out with the CLA 2A for this song so the reason why I did these two compression moves is because Travis Scott's vocals aren't very dynamic. They're very stuck in one pocket. So I went a little kind of, I guess this is heavy handed, but still I've seen way heavier compression done to vocals, but you want to make sure that you're compressing your vocals. The reason why we compress our vocals is to keep it consistent sounding. If we do not compress our vocals, then what's going to happen is it's going to be jumping in and out of the mix. And with Travis Scott's vocals, his lead vocal is always right there in your face where you could hear it. And then his ad libs and everything else is doing all the magic stuff and that's what's giving it that more depth perception so that's why i use these two compressors and then for the other songs i use the 2a or the 76 sometimes i'll use the tube tech again it just depends but you want to make sure that it is pretty compressed so that way it's at a nice even level and then after i do my compression usually the compression brings in some artifacts that's why i have this second eq so whatever character the previous compressors added i'll filter it again because you'll notice you'll get more low under 60 hertz energy that you, we just do not need in the vocals because it will get in the way and it will mess up your 808s and then again i was removing more boxiness right here more low <laughs> resonance rumble and then i felt that it was a little bit scratchy so i did this dip at 5000 hertz and then i also did a dynamic dip at 8000 hertz let's just say so again each song is different and each vocal is different everybody sits in a different frequency range so you could copy these settings but as far as like the upper range listen to what jars your ear within a vocal performance some people they have like certain frequencies that are just too jarring to the ear so you want to make sure you tame all that and then for the low mids what i like to do is i'll like whistle or hum i'll go i kind of find the frequency that resonates within the low mids and again referencing that to our reference track just to make sure that the vocals are eq'd properly after the eq all you have to do is go straight into the de -esser. so i just ds between 3000 hertz and 14,000 hertz i was just getting a little bit of gain reduction here and then again back to the boosting eq because what we do is we're going to tame it before we boost it because we don't want to be boosting any nasty frequencies that we don't want to hear that are just jarring to the ears so that's it for the leads now let's go into the sends so for each song i'll usually have a reverb and a delay that's straightforward this reverb right here is being sent and then this delay is being sent and then i have my effects right here so as you can see this one is my plate verb and then this one is my delay and as far as that goes it's just simple reverb and then just like a simple delay this is like a mono delay and then i just put a micro shift on it to stereoize the delay and then i just filter it out from the beginning and going in and going out i'm not going to go over that too much but let me just show you a quick little before and after with what it sounds like without the effects and the sense and this is with the effects so every time I wake up, I gotta stack that cake up Going double back, I move like that, I pick my pace up Ain't no way they can take us, I rhyme up with my face up In my eyes, I can be, I'm feeling way be up So every time I wake so that's basically cleaning up your lead vocals. Now let's go into the ad-libs and layers. So for the ad-libs and layers, I switched the song because the other song didn't have too many ad-libs or layers. That has more special effects, so be sure to stick around for the special effects section because those are really cool, interesting things that I want to show you guys. But this song had a little bit more ad-libs, so I'll just start you guys from the hook and I'll show you guys how I process the ad-libs. Okay, cool. So as you could hear, let me just mute the leads and then let me just show you what we did for the ad libs and layers. In Travis Scott's music, obviously he has a lot of ad libs when he does the it's lit and all that other kind of stuff. And the way that his ad libs are processed, usually they'll just have a really long stretched out reverb. That's what we're going to have here. So let me just solo this real quick just so you can hear it by itself. 
So what I did, again, just make sure you have your auto-tune, and then I just filtered out a little bit of the EQ right here, and then I compressed it again because with the ad-libs, you don't want them to be sticking out too much. So I compressed the ad-libs heavily, heavily, so that way it's really not coming out within the mix. So you could hear that here. You see it's basically hitting like negative 10, even passing negative 10, and that's for all the ad-libs. And then what I did right here was I did this lo-fi plugin. So with this lo-fi plugin, what it does is it filters out the sound of the ad-libs. So let me just show you a quick little example. I'm going to bypass everything after just so you could hear the these first two. So this is how it is with the lo-fi plugin on. So it down samples. When you lower the sample rate, it makes it sound a little bit more filtered off the top end. This is a Pro Tools plugin. Let me bypass this so you can hear what it sounds like bypassed. See how much brighter and like airy it sounds. So it just depends again from song to song, source to source. For this song, I didn't really want that to stick out, especially for the ad libs. So that's why I filtered it out. So again, if you change the sample rate right here, See, so, yeah. so I had it at 24,000 hertz. Yeah. So that way it's just a little bit filtered. So it takes a step back. So the leads again are right in your face and then the filtered ad libs are in the background. So the next plugin we used was a doubler. Again, this is all a taste thing. It just depends. Sometimes the ad libs, they could be in mono, which means they're just dead in the center. And then the reverbs are the ones that are making the stereo information. But for this song, I didn't want that center information. I only wanted the side. So that's why I used this doubler plugin. So again, I just muted the center and then I just did the side. So now we're only going to hear the ad libs for this song on the sides yeah. so that way the lead could sit in the middle and then the ad libs could be doing their thing on the side and after i did that what i did was i just filtered it a little bit more and then i threw an echo boy junior on it it has a very low mix in it so it's just giving it a little bit of that quarter note bounce but it's not very dramatic or drastic So it gives it those repetitions. You see, it's still repeating as I'm speaking. After that, what I did was, this is like, I guess what gives it the most of its sound, the reverbs. Basically, I just set my decay, my pre-delay, and then it's set to a 53% mix. Reverb gets very deep, so I just set it like this. But if you guys want to see me break down how to dial in your reverb for your songs, just leave a comment below. But this is just the settings that I use for this reverb, and that's what really gave it that, wow, it's lit, let's go, boom, you know? Like that's literally what Travis Scott does. That's the reverb on it. So now with all the effects on, this is what the ad lib sounds like. Yeah. So that's what gives it that space. And then let me bypass all the effects except for the auto tune. I'm gonna leave the auto tune on. See, it's a very loud in your face, crunchy, you know, so I didn't really want that for the leads. Let's just hear that within the mix real quick so I could show you guys what that sounds like. Okay, cool. Now, another thing that Travis Scott does is he has a lot of hums and harmonic parts. So let's jump over to the hook right here of this song so you guys can hear what that sounds like. Okay, so as far as the ad-libs go, so this one's just panning back and forth. Basically still the same effects. And then this track right here, same effects. So they're basically the same, just little slight tweaks. But again, you just got to play with it, see how you want to do it. As far as the hums go, if you listen to Travis Scott's music, he has a lot of like humming mm -hmm layers and all that kind of stuff. So as far as the hums go, what did I do? Just simple EQ, compression, again, downsampled it, doubler again to stick it to the sides, and then EQ and verb. So basically all these things kind of have similar processing just so they can get out of the way but again it all boils down to taste whether you want it either in the sides or in the center or if you want to pan to one side or the other side that's what mixing is the choice is yours you can choose however you want to do it but this is just kind of how travis scott does it and then i just jumped over to this song real quick so another thing travis scott uses is dub layers so basically when he's singing one thing he has another thing under it and usually what i find is that he'll modulate them heavy so we have the lead layer right here and then this is the double layer 
it's always the same thing. I always filter out the lows, compress, but this is what I use. So I use this modulation plugin and I just adjust the mix. This one was 60%, but you can play with it whether you want it more stereo or mono in the center. I detuned it a little bit and then I just threw a little bit of reverb on it. So let's hear what that sounds like right here. So that's that right there. And then with the lead. Yeah, I had it set up just to wait. And then what you may notice is that I also have a send right here. So this is a quarter note throw delay send on up. So that way after it says wait up, it goes up, 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 up. Up, which is the next thing that I want to get into all the sends and special effects. If you're enjoying the video so far and you want to get your music professionally mixed and mastered by an engineer, feel free to click the link below so you can make your music sound great today. Now let's get back into the video. So before we get into the sends and effects, I just kind of want to go over why I think vocal presets are trash. You guys are probably familiar with what a vocal preset is. And the reason why I think they're trash is because they're too static and stagnant. And if you're just relying on a preset, then you don't have the knowledge or the ability to use automation to your advantage, which is what's heavily done within Travis Scott's music. There's a lot of automation that's always going on. So this is why I want to go into the sends and effects section right here. So this is the third song, song three. And I want to play for you guys what I did with the automation here on the lead vocals so i'm gonna just open up these windows right here so you can see the automation sense that i did real quick it's just an eighth note throw delay and then i'll show you where the, the throw delay is right here but i'm just gonna play it for you so you can take a quick listen as to what i did for the automation Okay, cool. So if you listen to songs like God's Country, he says it'll be all right, 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 right. Or it has like that echo effect and that's an eighth note delay. So that's what I did with these end phrases. So let me just zoom in a little bit right here so you can see. So on this phrase, I did the eighth note delay on. So I'm saying it over, getting paid in every way. Yeah. Getting paid in every way, 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 way. And then right here. Out of sight, I'm out the way. Yeah. Me. And then as far as for the send goes for that eighth note throw delay, I basically sent it and then I automated it right here. So if you're on Pro Tools and you want to automate, all you have to do is throw your send right here to wherever you're sending it to. Click this little dot and then click right here where you want to automate. So I want to do the level for the eighth note throw delay. And then I found my little section right here. You just highlight it and then you just drag it up like so. And then as far as the send goes, I have my eighth note throw delay right here. So the signal going into this send right here was filtered. So I filtered it about 334 hertz and then 4.2 kilohertz so i just didn't want this i only wanted whatever was in here again that's just up to taste and then i used h delay at an eighth note because that's what gives it the d -d 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 -d. if we change the timing on it it's just going to sound different let me just show you real quick what that sounds like so this is a quarter note that's a quarter note we could do a half note yeah but for this example, we're using the eighth note delay, so that's why I have it like this. And then after the delay, what I hit it with was a little bit of Saturn. So I guess I just wanted to saturate the delay a little bit more so that way it could kind of stick out. Because sometimes if you just throw the delay by itself, it won't stick out within the mix if there's a lot of stuff going on within the mix. So I just saturated it right here with the warm tip saturation. I drove it a little bit, so this is before. Yeah. And then with it on. So if you really listen to that, it just takes a step forward within the mix. The delay does. So that's why I threw that on there. And then another EQ to just make sure after I saturated, I just get what I want in there. And then I did this modulation right here, the flanger. So it's a little bit more stereo because if I take this off, the delay is just going to be dead in the center. Yeah. Which that sounds pretty cool too. That sounds pretty solid, but I just wanted to be like wider, phasey, flangery, which is what we're using, flanger sounding. That's why I threw this flanger on here. So this is what it sounds like. It's basically making it sound washy, the delay. Yeah. Another way he'll use the sends is directly over the verse. This is another kind of creative style. I opened up the other song for this. Kind of like in I Know at the end of the second verse, I believe, he says something and it's delaying over it. So that's what gives it a lot of like that psychedelic kind of feeling that Travis Scott's music has. So if you listen to this right here. But she ain't never love you after all. So like it's delaying over the lead vocal, which is why I did it on this entire phrase. So this is what it sounds like with context within the mix. 
ADHD living, now you never pop the net or all that Bitch, she been a hoe, but she ain't never love you after all But fuck it though Another example Travis Scott uses is a heavily modulated effect. So for this song right here, what I did was I had a modulation sent and I sent it at full volume. And then right here, I just blended in the level on this track right here. All I had was Air Ensemble. This is a Pro Tools plugin that you could just download. And then I just have this set to a specific image. So I widened it a little bit with a little bit of EQ. So I filtered it out. And basically this is a send, but it's different because it's throughout the entirety of the lead vocals, which gives it a little bit more of a modulated effect. You can hear that kind of in songs like modern jam or circus maximus that's another big one too where he has his vocal sounding in like the left speaker and the right speaker versus dead in the center so for that i would use instead of ensemble i would use a doubler and then i would take out the middle and then delay the timing between the two so that way it sounds different but for this example all i really did was just use the air ensemble just to give it a little bit more of like a washy modulated sound again the s1 and the eq since at 100 percent volume so this is without the modulation so you could here it sounds very dry. So that's without the modulation, and then with the modulation on, this is what it sounds like. You're gonna notice that it sounds a little bit wider and more washy kind of sounding, and that's what Travis Scott does a lot too. So this is what it sounds like with the modulation. Basically, that's how you could also achieve a wide sound Travis Scott styled effect. So that's some examples of how Travis Scott uses his sends and returns to create interesting styled effects within specific sections of his songs. But now I want to go into the special effects that he uses. So one effect that Travis Scott uses a lot is that voice pitch shifting kind of thing. And that's like a great one. You know, it sounds super cool. So for this one right here, I jump back to the first song. And usually all you really need is little altar boy for this song. I pitched this example right here. So we're looking at this track right here. I pitched it down by five i guess that's sensor semitones i mean correct me if i'm wrong but uh so that's what i pitched it down by and you get this sound right here that's my <laughs> And then again, see, it's just all creative ways to use sends. Building off of the last point that we had, I use sends right here, a throw delay with the ping pong. So it's going left and right. When you're using your delay, you have that option to select ping pong. So basically it's like two effects in one. So it's pitching down and then it's delaying back and forth in eighth note delay. Combination. So that's, that's what creates that sound. But then also, if you listen to the song, My Eyes, you may notice that for his leads, it pitches up and then it pitches down, but then it's modulated and it sounds nice and special. So this this is how he created that effect. Basically, what you want to do is you throw a little altar boy. So for the high pitch, I pitched this up by eight on the formant. And then I also spread it out with a doubler to remove that center information and only keep the sides. Because if you listen to that song, it's literally only played on the sides, the high pitch. So that's for the high one. And then he also has a low pitch one where it's the same thing, but I just pitched it down by negative three. And then I moved it to the sides. And then I automated this width a little bit. So it's like mono and then it kind of like spread out a little bit more into the stereo field with the width on the low modulation so this is what that sounds like if you put it right in front of me i'll blow it down coming in like test so if you listen to that, we have the high one and it's only playing on the sides. I also had another layer right here for the high one where it's still playing, but I just tucked it down while the low one was playing. But then when the low one was playing, I had it pitched down again and with the stereo thing. But what I did was I stereoized it, but then I wanted to control the stereo width. So it basically kind of starts a little bit tighter and then it opens up and it gives more of like a moving experience, which I think sounds really cool as well. So that's how I recreated that special effect. Another way that you could use the Foreman effect is if you automate it so for this example on this song what i did was i automated my formant as you can see right here so it starts at zero and then it goes all the way down to negative 7.1 on this phrase so if you look at it right here it pitches down within certain sections so it starts with a normal voice and it pitches down that's another creative way that you could use formant within your mixes and the final effect that i want to go over here is an effect that travis scott used on the song parasail i did the opposite in this 
this song he pitched his voice down and then he had it panning like left to right but i did the complete opposite so i pitched it up and then i had it panning left to right but it's kind of the same effect so what i did was i have this lead vocal right here and i just duplicated it down again with a little alter boy i just raised up the format and then i had the pan man right here i go to basic panning two bar wide slow because that sticks to the grid and then i had it panning to one bar and then i set it right here so it goes from left to right back to left to right so then you can set the timing right here of how quick you want it so i had it set to one bar and that's what gave it a little bit more of like that kind of robotic interesting feeling so i noticed that he did that for parasail that was a really cool and interesting effect that i found so this is how i recreated it and this is what it sounds like and there you go that's how you achieve travis scott styled effects for your vocals if you guys found value in this video and want to get better quality recordings for yourself then don't forget to check out the pro tools recording course link in the description below where you will learn how to successfully record and get high quality music yourself and if you guys enjoyed this breakdown then don't forget to watch this video where you will learn how to get don toliver styled effects for your vocals i'll see you guys there peace